So you guys know that I've recently tried Race Room Racing Experience and I absolutely love it. So much so that I've been spending quite a bit of time in their multiplayer lobbies and while joining someone else's server is all good, hosting your own server is even better. With your own server, you'll be in complete control so you and your buddies can have your own private track day and of course, you'll have free reign to choose which tracks and which cars will be available and since it's your own server, you get to set all the rules. And just to be clear, we'll be running the server from the same computer that will be running Race Room without needing an extra router or any other physical hardware. I've also managed to find a workaround for an issue that most people face when trying to set up their own server, including myself, so make sure you don't skip that part. Alrighty, let's get into it. The very first thing that we'll need is to download the Race Room dedicated server app from Steam. So open up your Steam client and look under Library and Home. You want to click on the drop-down list here to search under Tools and then search for Race Room and Race Room Dedicated Server should pop right up. Go on and install that through Steam and when that's done, you'll see a command line window open up and a web browser screen should pop up as well. You'll set up your server preferences from this web browser window, so go ahead and give your server a name. And the other settings are pretty self-explanatory, so I won't be going through those details. Because what we want to do is to get your server up and running without any issues before we start tweaking any game-related server settings. So you want to scroll all the way down and click on the big green save button. And then scroll all the way back to the top and click the green button to turn on your server. Give it a couple of seconds and you'll see the status change to online. Before we get ahead of ourselves, we next need to do some port forwarding. Under your server name, you'll see UDP 60000 and 60002, followed by TCP 60001. Those are the ports that we'll need to open up on your router so that internet traffic can be passed through. So log on to your router via a web browser. My default router address is 192.168.1.254 and yours could be 192.168.1.1 or something very, very similar. And you'll want to look for the port forwarding settings. For this router, which was provided by my ISP, I found this under Advanced Settings and WAN or WAN. WAN. WAN? Once you've found your router settings page, we'll need to find out your local IP address of the computer that you're currently using. This is the IP address that your router has assigned to your computer. To do so, click the Windows Start button and type CMD, and click on the button to run it as administrator. Now type in ipconfig and it'll spit out a bunch of numbers at you. The important one that you'll want to look for is the IPv4 address, which in my case is 192.168.1.109. Note that this number can change from time to time if you shut down your computer and don't set a static IP address for your computer. You could configure your router to assign a static IP address, but otherwise it's just a simple case of just checking your IP address before you start your server. So now that we have our internal IP address, let's go back to the port forwarding settings for our router and we want to input the details into this screen. We'll do them one by one instead of entering a range of ports as some people have experienced problems when doing that. So let's create three separate entries, one for UDP port 60,000, another for UDP port 60,002, and a third one for TCP port 60,001. Once done, don't forget to click on Apply or Save. 
If you're feeling lucky, you can open up race room and head into the multiplayer server list and you should see your server there. But before you start celebrating, see if you can actually connect to your own server without any issues. If you can, then well, good for you. You're one of the lucky ones who has a router that supports NAT loopback. However, if you get this error like I did, that just means your router doesn't support that and you need to do an extra step. So stick with me, we're almost there. Hit your Windows key again and type hdwwiz, there's two w's in there, and run that as administrator. This brings up the old school add hardware wizard, so click next and select install hardware manually. And then we want to click next again and scroll down till you get to network adapters and then click next. On the left pane, select Microsoft and then from the right pane, select the loopback adapter as seen here. Click next and wait until the installation is complete. And then we're going to hit the Windows button again. And now type in ncpa.cpl and run that as administrator. You should see a new network adapter for the loopback. Right click on that and go into the properties. In the new window that pops up, click on Internet Protocol version 4 and then click on Properties. Select the Use the following IP address option and what we need to find out next is what our external IP address is. This is not the same as the 192.168 whatever earlier, which is our internal IP address. So we can very easily find out what our external IP address is by heading over to this website and then copy the IP address that you see there and enter that into the loopback adapter properties page earlier. Note that you'll need to check your settings here if you reboot your router and your ISP assigns a new IP address to you each time. Click OK and a warning will appear saying that your subnet mask is missing, but just click OK again and a default subnet mask will be used automatically. So here's my server and let me try joining it again. And there we go, we've managed to connect successfully this time round. It took me several hours of troubleshooting this to get it working for me, so I thought I'd share it with anyone who's thinking of starting their own race room server. Hit that like button if this video helped you out, and if you'd like to see more sim racing videos, it'll be cool if you also subscribe to this channel. Thanks everyone, I'll see you guys at the next video.